1979, agents of the Iranian regime illegally seized the U.S. Embassy in Tehran and held more than 60 Americans hostage. Get over it, you big ugly baby. 60 Americans were held hostage and treated with the usual Iranian hospitality before being released totally unharmed, despite the fact that they were insurgents and spies plotting against the Islamic Republic. Just imagine if America had found Iranian spies plotting the downfall of the White House on American soil. Do you think that the CIA would have given them the same human rights as Iranians gave to American hostages? Yeah, I can see it now. Iranian hostages sitting in Guantanamo Bay or Abu Ghraib, sipping tea and sitting on raised couches, not being tortured or waterboarded by American security personnel or being killed. Psh, even normal American citizens are bullied and harassed by the FBI for challenging or even questioning America's warmongering policies let alone spies. The Iranian-backed terrorist group Hezbollah twice bombed our embassy in Lebanon. Okay, let's get a few things straight here. In 1983, there was a suicide bombing in Beirut, Lebanon, that killed 63 people, including 17 Americans. The victims were mostly embassy and CIA staff members, but also included several US soldiers and one US Marine security guard. Not even going to go into why America seems to think it has the right to have a military presence everywhere in the world. You are not the global person. Police. But let's stick to the facts here. Hezbollah never claimed this attack. There was an anonymous phone call to the press saying, this is part of the Iranian revolution's campaign against imperialist targets throughout the world. We shall keep striking at any crusader presence in Lebanon. That's almost as credible as a Hollywood action movie. And even that guy didn't claim to be from Hezbollah. But it was actually some other random group calling themselves Islamic Jihad Organization, not Hezbollah. In fact, it was Judge Royce Lamberth of the US District Court in Washington, DC in 2003, 20 years later, who randomly determined that Hezbollah was responsible. Nobody believes anything that comes out of your hideous mouth, Mr. Trump. And anyway, that's not even Hezbollah's style. If Hezbollah does something, Rest assured, they'll come out and claim it themselves. Another Iranian-supported bombing killed 241 Americans, service members they were, in their barracks in Beirut in 1983. Okay, what the hell were American servicemen doing in Beirut, and why the heck should they have a military barracks there in the first place? Imagine if the Iranian president one day turned around and said, America killed 200 of our soldiers in their military barracks in Washington. And again, this wasn't Hezbollah anyway. It was some other random organization called Islamic Jihad or something. In 1996, the regime directed another bombing of American military housing in Saudi Arabia, murdering 19 Americans in cold blood. So let me get this straight. 19 American soldiers, who, by the way, were positioned in Khobar, Saudi Arabia, and assigned to a no-fly zone operation in southern Iraq, get killed in Saudi Arabia, the home of Wahhabi terrorism, your best friend, and the official June 25th, 1996 statement by the United States named members of Hezbollah al-Hijaz as responsible? Is that a joke? Iranian proxies provided training to operatives who were later involved in al-Qaeda's bombing of the American embassies. Wow, see, now you're just digging so hard to desperately try and find some sort of act of aggression that Iran has committed that you've gone as far as linking Iran to Al-Qaeda, a far-right tech theory group which has nothing but hatred for other Muslims, particularly Shia Muslims. You're trying to link these guys to Iran? Iran hates Al-Qaeda, just as it hates the American creation of Daesh. In fact, in 2014, the Quds Force, which is the special forces unit of Iran's Revolutionary Guard, was employed into Iraq to lead Iranian actions against Daesh. And the Al-Quds Force kicked Daesh's terrorist butts. Just as Al-Quds Force kicked terrorist butts in Syria. With all the kicking of terrorist butts that Al-Quds has been doing, it's no wonder why America, which doesn't seem to like the kicking of terrorist butt, declared Al-Quds to be a terrorist organization itself. In reality, to suggest that Iran or Al-Quds Force or the Revolutionary Guard has anything to do with Al-Qaeda or Daesh is absurd. The regime harbored high-level terrorists in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, including Osama bin Laden's son. <laughs>
All independent research indicates that 9-11 was an inside job. The American government, which blew up the Twin Towers in 2001, aspired to turn the world's hostility and attention towards Islam and Muslims. Even if we go with the official story, then where were these hijackers from? The majority of them were from Saudi Arabia, the nation which you just announced a record-shattering $350 billion sale of US-made weapons to. You're the one who has affiliation with these terrorists. You're the one who went to the 2017 Riyadh summit with your wife and your daughter. In 2016, when you were running for presidency, you'd gone on and on about nothing but Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia's role in the World Trade Center and the attack. That's very serious stuff. Suddenly in 2017, when you become the president, you declare Iran to be the number one terrorist state. While in Iran, in Tehran, back in 2001, people were holding candlelight vigils for the victims of 9-11. You hideous disappointment. People deserve the truth, not the lies that have been regurgitated by mainstream media organizations and changed to suit the whims and fancies of American foreign policy. The regime remains the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism and provides assistance to Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, Hezbollah, Hamas, and other terrorist networks. I know it can be lucrative to lie nowadays, but don't you feel a sense of moral obligation or at least of responsibility in being president of a nation not to lie? You're speaking so eloquently about the aggression of Iran without any actual evidence for your ludicrous allegations. Why not look at some of the acts of aggression which are on record officially, which the West has perpetrated, like how a British embassy report from 1932 admitted that the British put dictator Reza Shah on the throne of Iran. And of course this has got nothing whatsoever to do with the fact that Americans and Britishers were putting their greedy little fingers into the pies of Iran from the very beginning. Just as they feel like they have the right to rule over everyone else's nations and wealth, financial consultant Morgan Shuster was appointed Treasurer General of Persia in 1911. People like Howard Baskerville, another American, who was involved in the Persian Constitutional Revolution. People like Arthur Millspoe and Arthur Poe. This kind of arrogant dominance is called hegemony, where somebody feels they have the right to oversee the affairs of another nation or another people due to their own apparent superiority. And just as a side note, Mr. Trump, you have no superiority. It's all in your head, you narcissistic fool. But I'm gonna help you out anyway. Here's a map. You see all the parts in red? Those are the parts that you're in charge of. The parts in green, you have no business there whatsoever. Oh, and by the way, the red part is debatable as well, since the majority of people didn't vote for you anyway. It develops, deploys, and proliferates missiles that threaten American troops and our allies. No, let's not forget, Mr. Trump, that in 1988, it was the US Navy-guided missile cruiser which shot down an Iranian commercial flight, killing 290 civilians, including 66 children. And just as you're habitually lying right now, the US tried lying back then, trying to justify their actions, claiming that Flight 655 was a warplane, and then saying that it was outside the civilian air corridor. Both these statements turned out to be untrue, even according to the Washington Post. So Iran isn't the country that targets civilians with missiles, America is. It harasses American ships and threatens freedom of navigation in the Arabian Gulf and in the Red Sea. Your freedom of navigation in the Arabian Gulf? What the hell does that mean? Does Iran have the freedom of navigation in the Atlantic Ocean? Can, for example, an eastern country just waltz over to American oceanic territory with a military vessel? I don't know, for a picnic in the middle of the sea? You know, near an American shoreline? No. Then why the hell should America have freedom of navigation in any land other than its own? Especially when, if any country's navigation should be restricted, it should be America's. In 1988, the USA launched Operation Praying Mantis against Iran. Can you think of a better name? It was the largest American naval combat operation since World War II. Even the International Court of Justice stated that the attack could not be justified as measures necessary to protect the essential security interests of the United States of America. This is what America is. Should a madman with a bazooka, a trigger-happy moron on steroids, be given the freedom of navigation into your homeland? Hmm? It imprisons Americans on false charges. Imprisoning Americans? Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's the habit of America, not Iran's. 
After all, America has the largest prison population in the world. The US Bureau of Justice Statistics shows that 2,220,300 adults were incarcerated in US federal and state prisons and county jails in just 2013. So if you're concerned, Mr. Trump, about Americans being imprisoned, it's not Iran that you should be looking at. And it launches cyber attacks against our critical infrastructure, financial system, and military. Your financial system? The United States has frozen dollars in Iranian assets, including bank deposits, gold, and other properties. Wealth, which again does not belong to America or the West, it belongs to Iran. And on top of that, America's imposing of heavy sanctions on Iran and thus limiting the Iranian people's purchases of food, spare parts and medical products is only adding insult to injury. 